Uh, what you're gonna see today is not what's going to work in every scenario. Um, it's not gonna look pretty, but it's always worth running scenarios until failure to see where you need to build upon. We are doing a active shooter course here for church security. We're training them in essentially worst case scenario. My hope is for you to take this as serious as somebody like myself, uh, a combat veteran who's on a security team that leads a, a team at my church. Because what I'm seeing is not what you're seeing. You could be attending church daily and not see this and not ever think that it's a possibility. But you see it on news and it's always out there looming in the distance. This will get you upfront and personal with it and hopefully get you to uh, take it a little more serious with your own personal security. One thing as uh, the veteran nonprofit that uh, Sergeant Q is a part uh, that he founded, what we learned in there is about the squad. The squad is a small team, good, good. four, five, six guys. And what they do is they, they find out each other's strength, strengths and weaknesses, right? Because you're with each other more often than most people within that congregation. You find out your strength, okay, you're assigned to do this from now on. We're going to uh, use that if things go wrong. Hey, Bruce, come here. I want you to be outside, be outside to meet the ambulance when they come, the ambulance and police, okay? And that individual has a weakness or, or the inability to do something, no worries. Somebody else will have that ability within the squad. He's on 911, he's already on 911. Okay, yeah, and we got, we got a nurse in the back here. Jared, trauma bag. Bruce, you're gonna call 911 and meet up with them out there. And then distance, Tom, and I'll be the director. And as long as everyone's assigned that duty, the squad is impenetrable and they can, they can get the job done. You're making contact with people that you already suspect may be an issue. Hello. Oh, fine. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Frank. When the individual come through the door and he was clutching, uh, Greg made an extremely good point about watching him clutch his jacket close to him. It's, it's the same as like heavy backpacks or somebody who's wearing a trench coat in the middle of summer, you know. Why are they doing that? Stop them. Be like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Or where are you from? What do you do for a living? Then you can, you can kind of judge their character from there, right? For a lot of us, we have to change our mindset from being a parishioner to being a sheepdog. Okay, our job is to protect the congregation. If we hurt somebody's feelings, we will address that later. So your shooting lanes, did, when you were engaging the target, was there a way that you were shooting into somebody else or into the seats from the front? Um, if you were engaging that target and he had walked in front of the, the rows, if there was somebody sitting there and you're shooting from way back here, are you gonna shoot somebody in the back or in the back of the head? Hi, Greg. You've been to Wabash Church before? Uh, no. This no. Is first um, time. If you profile somebody, it's always good to kind of keep it at the forefront of your mind, but always stay aware of your surroundings, right? Somebody who you thought was a normal attendee or somebody who didn't fit the bill, so to speak, ended up being the shooter. Uh, so mental health is really a huge thing as well, you know, feeling the situation out. Um, not saying he was mentally unfit to hold the baby, but who knows, you know what I mean? Like, uh, he ended up being the shooter and he engaged the pastor before anything was seen or done because you were focused, everybody was focused on one person. Um, so if you're the escorting person in, or if you're assigned as the quote unquote babysitter at the time, everyone else should still be perusing the rest of the crowd. Hey, Morty, sir. Hey, bro. Hey. Sorry, what's your name? If you do have somebody you have to get physical with, do you have designated go high, go low guys, somebody who's, who's physically able to remove whoever is disrupting the service, especially somebody who all of a sudden sits down and it, you have to move their body weight now. To immobile somebody, the low guy, all he does is wraps up as hard as he can and sits there to make sure the individual doesn't move. And it's the top guy, the go high guy's job to disarm and incapacitate the individual if need be, and then you remove the, the person. The other thing you have to think about, and there's no right or wrong answer here for this scenario, but is it better to take a gunshot victim who is wounded, possibly mortally, and drag them outside past the entire congregation? Or is the best case scenario to stabilize them here and to evacuate the congregation? So you guys should think about what is your evacuation plan? How do you do that and who's in charge of that? Again, it's creating these positions that people are in charge of. That, that I know that if something happens and it needs to be evacuated, whoever is in charge, who's calling the plays, is gonna tell me to evacuate them. 
I know what to do. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, we have a uh, individual causing a scene that is uh, currently trying to attack our pastor. He's currently subdued. He does appear to have a gunshot wound as, as well. You cannot plan for every scenario, but you need to plan for enough of them that if something does arise, you at least have a starting point on what to do, and you can start to figure out the next steps as you're going through it. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with his joy, sir, 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 the sir, sir, only God, I, our I Savior. I need to get, I need to. Hey, Britt, hey, Britt, what, what were you doing? I was gonna get, uh, get up on stage and pray. <laughs> You're gonna die! You're gonna die! It is what it is. People freeze up or, or, or are uneasy doing things when things are going down, that's fine. As long as you're loud enough to say, hey, can I get help over here, please? Um, and then I came over and helped and, and you would essentially either make sure that we're safe where we're at, making sure that scene is safe, or you're gonna go out and help with guiding the emergency uh, people inside, uh, whatever is necessary, maybe grabbing something from the aid kit that I need, you know what I mean? Uh, he's been shot to the chest, yes, he's got a sucky chest. You have to go hands on with somebody and, and have a scenario where you have to draw your firearm and you have to actually shoot somebody, it's going to be a horrible experience one of the worst that you've ever had to go through in your life. You're gonna to continue to second guess yourself, did I do the right thing? Shoot, no shoot scenario. Those are normal feelings. I highly suggest you go and speak to a grief counselor who's gonna be able to help you walk through that and process through that. You may end up having nightmares, anxiety, you may not understand what's really happening. I'm just, I'm trying to give you guys the real scenario. Like this is what is gonna happen, is this stuff is gonna come back to get you and you're not gonna understand why. And as soon as it does, you need to seek help immediately. Don't hold it off and think like, ah, oh, it'll get better on its own, it won't. If you broke your arm, it wouldn't get better on your own. You gotta go see a doctor, he's gonna reset it and it's gonna take time to heal. Same thing with a mental wound, okay? Something breaks in your brain, it's a mental wound. You have to go see a professional and they can help you heal from this trauma. The next time you go to church, the next time you go to a restaurant or somewhere where there's a large amount of people, I want you to start looking around at individuals. Start trying to feel the environment. It's gonna happen a lot faster than you think. So just shooting paper targets or just kind of talking about things isn't gonna do it. You need to get out and train with other people uh, who are like-minded individuals to do that same thing together, come up with scenarios that could happen, and then do a dry run, see how it goes. My name is Greg Lavelle, and I look forward to you guys watching another one of these.